mom's friend and my best friend. I'm Salma Shaw, and I brought my mom, my dad, and my twin sister. My name is Alex Sardella. Today with me, I have my mom and my dad, as well as my three, three friends back then. <laughs> I'm Zoe Limoges, and I brought my mom. I am going to um, <clears throat> do an executive decision here and be the first question. I would like to know one by one, because I'm the one that recruits, what inspired you to participate in this? Start here, go down. Well, my English teacher offered me extra credit. <laughs> change and education specifically, uh, which was really close to me, so that's why I chose this. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, Antoinette is going to take over and you are open for questions and I'm going to go back and see what the judges are doing. <laughs> How do you feel, guys? Great, cool. great, good, great, good. Well, they're going to ask some questions. Okay, so does anyone have any questions or comments that they would direct you to the kids, specifically or just generally? This is when you get to raise your hand and say something. <laughs> yes. Um, my daughter is a sixth grade school teacher in ASU Preparatory in Arizona. And as such, she looks through her experience with high school at Moon Bay here. What would each one of you recommend that I tell my daughter that she can teach her sixth graders about a high school education that you really appreciate and you feel that she could instill in them? I'm curious, from where you sit, from your perspective, do you feel like our society in general cares a lot about how well educated you are? Um, yeah, I mean, well, I think it depends what location in the world that you're in. Like, that in the location, different locations prioritize education more than others. Here? I would here. Well, um, I think locally and United States in general.
if you don't go to college almost, if you don't like do like the most amount possible, it can be kind of difficult to find a job. Yeah, it's so funny. It's kind of like an oxymoron because you're expected to, you know, high school, college, even more school if need be, and yet our education systems are so flawed. It's like, how are we meant to achieve such great things when you're not giving us the tools to do so? It's, I find it really funny when you think about it. I feel like, yeah, locally, you can zoom in anywhere, and yeah. the local towns and communities really value it, like, for the actual value of education. But, like, as a whole, as if you're just going through college to get this, like, higher job that would be cut off to you otherwise, I feel like, <laughs> on a side, it's, uh, for at least that path, or as a whole, it's kind of broadcast as, as go through education so you can get a better career and get more money, which is kind of backwards way of not valuing the education and just valuing the money, so I wouldn't, no. But I think on the local scale, it's very valuable. Yeah, over there. Yes. Yeah. Um, last year, Half Moon Bay made the U.S. and international ambassador to get a mass murder. I was wondering what you learned from having Half Moon Bay being in the spotlight and what you learned about the incident where farmers were working in a stressful position. Um, anyway. Well, I would say. Uh, this quote I like that nobody cares unless you're pretty or dead it's kind of nobody will pay attention unless something really horrible happens so I mean you don't hope you always hope something horrible doesn't happen when it does you should know you're going to be thrust into the spotlight pretty quickly I mean crazily enough I was in a classroom practicing for speech track last year with Antoinette when our school went into lockdown because of the shootings and that was Horrifying. We were crouched in this classroom underneath the window, just muttering our speeches to ourselves, trying to still practice while everything was going down. And then hearing about it later was just so heartbreaking. I think being in the news is important when things happen like that to spread awareness about this is happening. Like, if we put these horrible things under wraps, the problems are just going to keep happening. If we put a spotlight on it and show the imperfections in our country, maybe something will actually happen. I think while it was horrible that it happened, it did shine a light on the problems in our country and specifically in this town that we have. And I believe it led to a good amount of change. I mean, the president commented on it, Governor Newsom, I'm pretty sure he did something about it. I can't remember exactly what happened, but a bill or something went into place after that happened. So as horrible as it did, it did inspire change. And that's all we can ask for. I think Alex, Alex said that perfectly. <laughs> I mean, if it inspires change, it's all perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, Sue. Oh, um, no, you are. <laughs> it's um, just a person was next to you. <laughs> I taught elementary here for many, many years, and I'm just curious as to how you see your elementary education in your middle school. overall rich environment that you need as a, as a youngster so that when you got to high school you were curious enough to try other things. I think um, since you have more freedom in the lower grade levels and you're allowed to do more things, I think yeah, it prepares you for whatever you want to do in the future in high school. And you personally? Yeah. I think elementary is pretty good right now. Middle school is always going to be very difficult time. <laughs> difficult changes for everyone. So that's never going to be great. But I'm not optimistic about it. Well, so, maybe, maybe it prepares you for some of the stuff you're going to have to handle. Yes. Okay. <laughs> good say. <laughs> I loved my elementary school experience. I can't much about middle school. I was one of the COVID kids, you know. I got sixth grade and that was 
about it. So I can't comment on middle school, but elementary school, I had a great time. I specifically remember enjoying um, the field trips. And not like, you know, the field trips to like foreign places like museums, specifically the one that we took in fourth grade to Columbia to go gold mining to learn about the gold miners. And we went gold panning and it was so much fun. And I think just like making our elementary school experiences more like that, like hands on learning, not only will, like Zoe said, it'll help engage the kids, but I just remember that being the highlight of my elementary school career. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also loved my elementary school experience. I went to Pescadero, uh, and all the teachers were amazing. Uh, actually still close with a few of them. And like, the community was just so close-knit, and everyone knew each other, and all the teachers like still like talk and, like all the time, and they're still there, and I don't know. Uh, I really loved it, and I felt like it definitely prepared me for high school, and obviously COVID in middle school was a struggle, but then you get back into high school. I feel like it was a great experience. So it's an important part of your experience. Yes, very oh, much. Of course. <laughs> yes, the shop. Oh, I wanted to know if you all could talk a little bit about whether you have any public speaking experience or was this your first time doing something like this? Um, and whether, what did you learn from it? Like, did you enjoy writing and speaking in front of people? Did it terrify you and you never wanted to do it again? That kind of thing. <laughs> well, I've done, the closest I've gotten to public speaking is just a talent show I did when I was in middle school, and that's pretty much the closest I've gotten. So this definitely um, helps, or is going to help with future public speaking experiences that I'll have to go through. So yeah, I did. and I enjoyed the entire process. I also did a talent show sort of thing where I was the speaker and the announcer for every single act. At the time, I was really considering going to journalism, but honestly, to be totally honest, out of this whole thing, I decided that it might not totally be for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was a good experience, and if I get a job, probably have to, like, present stuff and, like, be like, here are the statistics and stuff. <laughs> I did Speech Trek last year, and I had so much fun. I really enjoyed the experience. I mean, just working through it was so much fun. Presenting it was so much fun. So. I came back and I did it again, and I enjoyed it just as much this year. I think public speaking is a very important skill to have. I mean, public speaking can be anything from speaking in front of a cloud to just like speaking to your classmates in school. Like, it doesn't have to be you're presenting to a huge auditorium. It's just like having the confidence in yourself to properly present your ideas to an audience, and I think it's a very valuable skill to have, and this has definitely helped me with it. I mean. You're always anxious stepping up on stage, but once you get moving, you know, the nerves fade and you just feel so confident in yourself, so. Uh, I did a couple musicals and plays for theater and actually was in Adam's Family this year at uh, Coastal Rep. Uh, and I think that obviously this is like an awesome experience and definitely helps. And also kind of like Salma, I wanted to get into journalism. I still want to get to the <laughs> <laughs> um, And yeah, it's a great experience. Okay. Would you recommend it to others? Like, would you say to underclassmen, you ought to do this? Any chance you'd get a positive response? Or what is it that? Prompted you? I mean, why? Why? Why so? I know you said why personally, but why do people not do it? I mean, you know, what holds you back? Fear. Fear. Good answer. <laughs> fear. Yeah, that's a biggie. And how do you get over fear? Anybody? To do it. You have to do it, and you have to do it, and you have to practice a lot, right? We did. We practiced a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she keeps me giggling. <laughs> Anyone else? Anything? What would you say to someone out, you know, like a friend or whatever? You ought to try it. No? I, I mean, you can get your voice heard and, like, begin. Like, if you want to, like, share your voice in the future, it's definitely a great step in learning how to do that. Yeah. 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 If you have 
of social anxiety, it's definitely a way to overcome it. Speaking to a bunch of people. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. definitely a good way yeah. to do it. Push through. Okay. So if you have the follow the right thing, if you have the dedication, it's definitely a good opportunity to exercise that. Okay. Anyone else out there? Okay. I believe there are goodies in the back. Back there and say, oh, okay. Yeah, can I just say that it could really help you with the interview? And with Zoom being as it is, the only thing you really have is your voice and your appearance. Yeah, good point. Really good point. Is anyone else with anything else they want to add before we hit the cookies? <laughs> decision for the judges. They've been really working hard. So um, we don't, we have a first place and then after that everybody else is an honorable mention. We're not second, third, and fourth places, okay? So in no particular order here, first honorable mention is Salma. Runner-up again, not in any order, is Julian. <laughs> and then third runner-up, again, not in any particular order, is Zoe. <laughs> so I don't think he's won, Zoe. <laughs> okay, so our first place winner is Alex. Meeting from here. Okay. Okay. Great job, you guys. Hey,